Hi, I'm Jay Martin, the developer of the Compliant Force Distribution Socket Interface Designs for Hip Disarticulation and Hemipelvectomy Levels of Amputation. As a clinical and research prosthetist, I've spent much of my career working with difficult-to-fit patients, and I've found that my patients' functional abilities are often limited not as much by their amputation as by the lack of available technology, so I set out to change that. I've developed a number of prosthetic components and technologies over the years, including computer-controlled prosthetic joints, autonomous robotic control systems, neural integration strategies, but what I'm most passionate about is improving socket interface designs. It doesn't matter how great the components are if the socket interfaces isn't comfortable. The prosthetic field has done a great job advancing the state-of-the-art components, but how prosthetic sockets are conventionally fit is years behind where they should or could be, so I wanted to change that. Conventional hip disarticulation interface designs are often referred to as bucket-style sockets for obvious reasons. These sockets were originally designed in the 1960s, and while minor changes have been made over the years with improvements of newer materials, they remain heavy, bulky, uncosmetic, and lack the level of control that is required to manage all three prosthetic joints of the leg as efficiently and effectively as possible. Conversely, the Compliant Force Distribution Hip Socket design has been dubbed the Bikini of Hip Sockets. It's less than half the size and weight of conventional hip disarticulation interface designs, yet significantly increases biomechanical control and stability. To control a hip level prosthetic limb, the user tilts their pelvis forward, which initiates the hip and knee movement into the swing phase of gait. However, the old bucket style hip sockets are comparatively loose from the front to back and limits the amount of pelvic rotation that can be captured to control the prosthetic limb. The anterior and posterior wings of the Compliant Force Distribution Interface are specifically designed to capture nearly all of the pelvic rotation and makes control of the prosthetic much easier. Instead of wrapping the entire heavy and bulky mass of the socket all the way around the user, this design replaces the majority of the socket with lightweight, compliant, and adjustable iliac crest stabilizers. These sections contour over the iliac crests or hip bones and help suspend the prosthesis through distributing the forces through soft and compliant materials. The iliac crest stabilizers are fully user adjustable and inherently accommodate for weight gain and loss. For practitioners, there is no need to modify this area into the cast. Simply cast the small anterior and posterior wing areas and attach the iliac crest stabilizers to complete the fit. I actually find it easier to fit a hip level socket than many BK patients. While that might seem like a bold statement, this design makes the complex world of fitting hip and hemipelvectomy levels ultra simple, which ultimately just increases your patient's success with their prosthetic. One study I found shows that there is an 82% rejection rate for hip level amputees. I believe a major contributing factor to such a large percentage is how antiquated many conventional hip sockets are. They're typically heavy, bulky, lack control, and can be uncomfortable. The Compliant Force Distribution Socket has minimal trim lines and covers significantly less surface area. The open design is inherently breathable, cool, and maintains full anatomical range of motion of the sound side. It is also much more cosmetic under clothing than conventional designs. This video of a recent fitting was taken within the first five minutes of walking on a prosthesis after having rejected his prior conventional design years before. You can see just how much better control and stability this design provides compared to a conventional hip level socket. This gentleman has a high level hemipelvectomy level amputation. In this case, we incorporated a broader compliant force distribution technique in conjunction with the iliac crest stabilizers because he does not have an iliac crest on his prosthetic side. You can see here just how solid his suspension is. There's nearly no pistoning at all and he has a hemipelvectomy level of amputation. My goal with this technology is to disseminate it out to the prosthetic community. I know that I'm not able to personally fit every patient who would benefit from this technology. So I spend a lot of my time training other practitioners how to be successful with these fittings as well. I'll either fly in and spend two days training and fitting a patient with their local practitioner or can provide comprehensive DVD training and iliac crest stabilizer fabrication kits. If you believe this technology would benefit you or your practice, please connect with me for a free consultation.